Great. All right. So today we'll have the last uh, third lecture of Nicholas Gardner from University of Washington. The title is the same, and it's on the slide, non-semi-simple to QFTs from 3D and equal 4 QFTs. Nicholas, please. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you all for uh, joining me again for this third in a series of lectures. Um, the first one was a bit more physical. I hope yesterday's lecture was uh, sufficiently mathematical, although there was some uh, science fiction. Um, today, I wanted to extend the discussion we were having yesterday to a more general setting where we look not at the free hypermultiplet, but at the theory that should, in some sense, generalize Stern Simon's theory based on SUN at some positive integer level K. Um, so that's the aim for today. I'll share some of the cool mathematics we're able to glean out of the physics. Um, I'm going to suppress most of the physics to uh, satiate the mathematical audience. But if you have any questions about it, I'm happy to share um, my perspective. In any case, let's just start out with a reminder about what we did last time. The main focus was studying a free hypermultiplet, in particular, rosansky witten theory with target T star C or C2. Um, we discussed uh, various perspectives on what the line operator category looks like, starting from some version of matrix factorizations on the loop space to creating this finite dimensional model that we have on the right-hand side. Um, and we related it to two different perspectives, one of which was related to uprolling the unrolled restricted quantum group for SL2 at quantum parameter Q equals I. Um, and that was in turn related to the symplectic fermion VOA, uh, which sat at the boundary of the free hypermultiplet um, or the B-twisted free hypermultiplet. So in the same way that we started off our lecture series, uh, we're interested in some topological quantum field theory, This, in this case arising as a supersymmetric twist of a 3D n equals 4 theory. It admits some interesting boundary vertex operator algebra with which we can describe line operators as VOA modules. And this in turn was related to some category of quantum group modules. Um, using a flavor of a Kajdan-Lustig type correspondence. And so um, on the right here, I have, have listed several of the categories that showed up. Uh, the one that sort of we started with was this matrix factorization category on T star C. Here, we're looking at categories um, not with just line operators all by themselves, but line operators that source an interesting background flat connection and this zeta parameter, um, or the lambda parameter in the quantum group setting, corresponded to the holonomy or infinitesimal holonomy of that flat connection. So, and for uh, the most part, oh, yes, of course, because, sorry. Yeah, but... Sorry, because I'm not a physicist, so I do not buy it. Uh, so uh, for uh, is it, are we talking about just rosansky witten theory, or are we talking about more general 3D and equal 4? Uh, so I, I I would like just to 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 understand the basics because I I forgot. Mm. Yeah, of course. So um, the free hypermultiplet. Um, it, it's for me. It, it's it, B twist it, it, corresponds. No, 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 no. Uh, so you you start with some three d three dimensional theory, with whatever number of fermions, whatever spinners. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, mm, uh, the 3D theory for mathematicians, it's a three-dimensional manifold and maybe some additional data. All right. So if you are, to uh, 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 are you talking about arbitrary 3D manifolds or 3D manifolds with some additional structures, like maybe spin C structures, something else. And as for Azansky-Witten, 
uh, do you fix some additional like hyperkeller manifold is it t star of c or something else so i would like to understand something which kind of have mathematical meaning 3d n equal four for me it's sort of a it's it's nothing i would like to kind yeah. of yeah all right so uh, so it's exactly as you just said um this example here corresponds to rosensky witten theory with target t star c so my okay. target space for this this quantum yeah, field theory t is Great. is t star c um okay. the three manifold which, which is non on is sort of, uh, hold on hold on which is non-compact all right which is non-compact yes uh, so it, it's sort of outside quite... of the realm of yeah usual rosensky witten theory which is okay compact hyperkähler so it is, it is a bit beyond rosensky witten theory but it it's morally the same theory uh, um, I, here we're not talking about just line operators of course um so if you were to specialize the holonomy zeta to be one then you would land on the coherent sheaves on the target space description of line operators you may be more familiar with uh maybe i do and if i consider uh, uh more general okay so uh, all what i remember about rosansky witten uh, kind of back to 90s and first of all of course your uh maybe complex symplectic manifold it should be um, it was at the time it was compact and i do yes. not know generalizations to non-compact story uh, now second uh, there might be some restrictions on 3D manifolds if you, mm, it's not just kind of, it's not arbitrary. Sometimes people say that it's sort of homological sphere, especially then when they speak about rosansky witten inv in, uh, invariants. Yeah, so then. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's definitely going to be the case here. We're not allowed to have an arbitrary three manifold. It's equipped with a, a spin C structure where um, the sort of the link components will be labeled by these matrix factorizations um, with the holonomy of my spin C structure uh, being given by this data around any one of the link components with the coloring labeled by the objects in this category. Uh, I see. So it's not just an art. Yeah. So the background flat connections should be thought of as a version of a spin C structure. Um, and I'm just talking about, about abelian ones. So that's a, essentially all no, you need hold, to know. Hold on. Um, uh, so so it's, it's a, no, I do not understand. Uh, so okay. your uh, a flat connection is, is, is a connection on what? Um, well, combined with a choice of spin structure, it should be part of uh, the data of a spin C structure. Uh, okay. On, so on my it's a flat space connection. Time. It's a flat connection on your uh, three manifold. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. With a prescribed uh, monodromy, which is, uh, well, so it's, it's a rank one, it's a line bundle. Yeah, because you yes. have only one, one parameter. Uh, mm, and somehow the spin C structure, so it's probably uh, maybe a line bundle twisted by something uh, because, uh, 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 okay. Mm, mm, uh, now, uh, um, no, I'm confused so uh for indeed for z equal one i understand that your matrix factorization is just coherent shifts on t star c in some sense so oh, since everything is derived is db koch and you arrive yeah. to probably to an upgrade of the old story where you where we had db koch on on a compact uh, hyperkeller manifold okay there was no uh, bundle there and so the only new ingredient here is this um, uh, bundle on on your 3d manifold with a spin c structure and you fix uh, um, monodromy the uh, conjugacy class well in this case it's just a monodromy itself because it's one dimensional and uh, 
I forgot what is uh, this uh, y z minus one x. What, what, what that? Uh, this this was uh, the super potential that we used to describe uh, line operators with the holonomy zeta. Um, so uh, x y are what the coordinate x. On on t star yeah c. x and y are the coordinates on t star c you can think of x as being the coordinate on the base and y as the coordinate on the fiber uh last time i used a symplectic type notation and here i was i was just using the split notation um mm. so then in particular independently on physics which kind of i will forget immediately uh, uh you have a statement here which you somehow comment last time this left to side the arrow that matrix factorization on t star of c with certain potential let's say representations well certain representations of a certain quantum group also uh, I, I forgot what lambda means mod lambda by the action yeah, I haven't, can, can yeah. you recall what, what is that and why 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 it is true yes definitely of course um so um the the triangle here is meant to represent uh three different facets of um how we can describe line operators with the holonomy zeta um the top one was sort of a more physical one the bottom right corresponds to modules for the symplectic fermion VOA that have a certain twist, which is zeta. We had a C star symmetry that acted on the symplectic fermions, and we were interested in line operators that were, sorry, modules for the symplectic fermion that induced a twist by the automorphisms uh, act by zeta. In the lower left corner, we have a certain um, version of modules for the unrolled restricted quantum group. So we we have this unrolled restricted quantum group for SL2 at Q equals I. We consider the category of modules. Uh, this lambda parameter corresponds to specifying that the monodromy with the generators of um, the uprolling procedure um, corresponds or the, the braiding with those generators is um, encoded in this the solonomy zeta. And more uh, concretely, this says, this requirement says that H, the Carton generator, acts semi-simply with eigenvalues in lambda plus 2z. And what means mod z on, on the symplectic fermions? Mod z. So the... So the mod Z on this quantum group side corresponds to equating modules for the quantum no, no, group. No, no, on symplectic by... fermions. Here, yeah, I, I understand. I, it, certainly... Yes, I, I'm, I'm explaining that part ah. as well. Um, I wanted to remind you what it was on the left side so that mm -hmm. I could remind you of how it is related to the thing on the vertex operator algebra side. So on the quantum group side, it was equating modules that differed by fusion with the modules I used to do this uprolling. And on mm -hmm. the symplectic fermion side, it is in some sense invisible, um, but it corresponds to how this quantum group is related to the symplectic fermions. Namely, there's an equivalence between the m equals zero part of the symplectic fermion Namely, we have this C star action, and you can look at the invariance. This is a particular vertex operator algebra known as the P equals two singlet VOA. So S equals, or sorry, M equals zero in this decomposition of the symplectic fermion is itself a VOA, and its category of modules corresponds to that of this restricted unrolled quantum group. And so uh, when we ask a, for- Is it a theorem or what? I, because I don't know. That is a theorem. It's that a, theorem a theorem proved by whom? That is a great question. I think it was, uh, this is something I should have written down. Um, 
I know the one for the triplet that I'm going to be describing just below, um, but I forget the one for the singlet. Because in your triangle, all three arrows uh, looks as, look as mathematical theorems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, and therefore, my question is, which of these are theorems and and if they are, who proved that uh, they, they are uh, theorems? Maybe. I was planning to do a more thorough uh, description of the general case on the next slide. Yeah. Um, but at the very least in this bottom one, these two things are probably more familiar for you, where we have uh, a certain vertex operator algebra, which is the triplet. Um, the P equals two triplet vertex operator algebra. Um, I'm not an expert in the right, OA, so is... I don't I don't remember the terminology, but that's fine. Uh, but, but it it's... is a it is a it is a vertex operator algebra. Um, yeah. It has a category of modules. Um, on the bottom right, we have uh, the small quantum group Katz di Concini um, at Q equals I for SL two, and this. Um, was proven by two sets of people using fairly different methods. One was um, Negron and let me get the other person, Gannon, Probably and yes. uh, also Gannon separately Negron. proven by Kreutzig, um, Leit Lentner, and Rupert um, in, in this specific case of P equals two uh, triplet. So this is this is certainly a theorem for this bottom one um, this relation to matrix factorizations, I'm not entirely sure has been, uh, proven rigorously. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay. and so this sort of top one is perhaps the part of this triangle that isn't necessarily, um, as well-defined, but certainly the, the bottom rows of this triangle are, are theorems. This one down here is due to the people I just mentioned. Um, this one for symplectic fermions, um, I don't believe have has a precise proof, um, but it's not so different from the triplet. The singlet statement I know is also a theorem, but I'm forgetting who who proved it. Hmm. Uh, again, only just in this bottom row. Um, I can't say anything about the top of the triangle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And also yeah, in this case, the bot bottom of both both for the uh, small restricted quantum group and also the triplets, there are only finitely many. Uh, in this case, I guess there are how many four irreducible modules uh, for the uh, earlier for the up rolling um, up road quantum group. There are infinitely many irreducible modules, so that's probably the reason yeah, the thing pushing with... out uh, this Z. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. the symplectic fermion VOA only has a single uh, simple. The mm -hmm. um, quotient by Z in this expression reduces the infinite number of modules that was just mentioned to, well, one. There's a, there's a, uh, yeah. Um, and for this triplet, I would have expected two, but maybe it is four. Um, I forget where four. the factors of two go around. And, and the fact that you take Q being first root of one, it is it related to SL2, this Q for quantum group and the rank of the quantum group, are they somehow related? Because it's very strange to take Q equal Y for the quantum group. Um, Probably you... I you... think... Uh... A priori, they're not related, but in this example, they are. There are the, the the aim of the rest of this talk will be to explain how to go beyond rank two and uh -huh. level two. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Um, great. It's not uh -huh. going to be the free hypermultiplet anymore or a Z2 quotient of that, whatever it means. Um, it's going to be a, a lot harder to write down what the theory is explicitly, um, even in terms of uh, physical pseudoscience, if you will. Okay. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, okay. So just uh, to reiterate, 
last time we talked a lot about the free hypermultiplet. Um, there's an even part of the free hypermultiplet that corresponds to this uh, P equals to triplet VOA, um, which is in turn related to the restricted quantum group at Q equals I. Um, and so the aim of this talk was to try to extend it to other levels and the rest of type A. And so I've sort of inverted this triangle where in the top row now we have this logarithmic kajdan lustig correspondence. Um, in some places it's proven. Um, as I was mentioning, uh, Kreutzig, Lentner, and Rupert proved it for general level in a preprint that came out earlier this year. Um, they have a proof for k equals two as well that came out yet earlier. Um, and as does as do Gannon and Negron. Um, and I've also mentioned a couple other notable entries in this in this description. Uh -huh. And this is an equivalence of Breda's tensor categories of modules for the fagan tikunin algebra, which is the thing that extends the triplets beyond rank one um, and for any positive integer level. Not what, generic on, on, the quantum, on the quantum group side, when you uh, write UQ of SLN, because yeah. I started to be confused. What do you mean? I mean the Katz Dikincini form of the quantum group at you mean that a you 2k root of unity. Which it's a kind of more stupid way to uh, uh, consider quantum group at roots of unity. You just place q equal root of unity and, and see what happened to the relations. You do not do this complicated uh, quotient which Lustig did when he can, uh, uh, compared with, with finite characteristic. It's it's something very, very naive. Yeah, it's kind of... Yeah, we, we do set... Um... The uh, I'm confused. Non -carton when, generators to when 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 you uh, when you consider Kajdan Lustig correspondence sort of a classical, it's a different quantum groups. It has nothing to do with Katz and the Concini. It's more sophisticated thing, which uh, um, uh, yeah, with kind of divided generate i mean it's it's more complicated it's not cuts the continuous so yeah I'm confused why you call logarithmic kashdan lustig if it's a different i mean it's a different quantum group yeah uh, it's yeah i think that that's fair i think yeah. was that also not a generic q yeah but it was a root of unity for for oh, yes. mm. that this is uh, called a restricted quantum group which is a uh, uh, the quotient of the Kastekachini, which sits inside of the divider power uh, quantum group as a very small finite dimensional uh, sub, yeah, sub yeah, 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 but, 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 I, but I was confused because that quotient is indeed related to, to VOA coming from this Kajdan yeah. considerations. But not the the actual the quant the snave quantum group. I, I don't know. It's called big or whatever. So it's kind of a different thing. You, you can call quantum group million different things, but these two objects are different in the sense that you cannot specify, um, uh, for example, this logarithmic thing in order to obtain another Kajdan Lustig. So. Uh, this logarithmic kashdan lustig correspondence should be a kind of a, it's a one word you can you cannot say mm -hmm. it's a logarithmic version of kashdan lustig correspondence so it's completely different type so those whoever proved it it's a completely new at least for me it looks as completely new result mathematical also, yeah also you, you notice on the left hand side the quantum group side the q is uh always a even root of units. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, great. So, uh, I overcame. Yeah, yeah okay. they, they are all about, uh, probably you will say something about uh, not necessarily roots of unity case, but uh, so far it's all not. about root. Ah, you will not. I will uh, only focus on uh, even roots of unity. Uh, okay. Those are the ones that you see with Turn-Simon's theory uh, 
And my aim was to describe a generalization thereof, not mm -hmm. necessarily the analytic continuations that allow for generic Q. Or yeah, but actually that's what I am mostly interested in. And I, I, I hope, but anyway, uh, then I will ask you some questions and then, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, so, so yeah, of course. Um, so we have uh, this triangle and maybe the naming of the top edge isn't ideal, but it is what it is. Um, there is a an analog, a logarithmic analog of the uh, Kajdan-Lushtig correspondence um, that is conjectured by Fagan, Gaitanov, Simikatov, and Tapunin, uh, where the quantum group on the left-hand side is instead related to a vertex operator algebra uh, discovered by Fagan and Tipunin, now bearing their name. Um, uh, in the same vein, we can try to extend the rush tegan Turayev construction to uh, the rest of the quantum group. And this was done in um, many series, uh, a very long uh, chain of papers, but uh, now bears the name of Constantino Gear Petro Meron um, and their uh, corresponding TQFT, where they can produce date spaces and uh, partition functions. And I don't believe they can do higher categories beyond one. Uh, so it's not a fully extended TQFT. Um, but this work subsumes many other earlier invariants like Henning and Lukashenko, the ADO invariant, Kashaev, um, and all base is all based around the um, machinery of relative modular categories, where the in some sense the relative modular structure is tied into that uprolling procedure that I, I mentioned last time, but I won't have time to describe that part of the story. So uh, my aim for today was to. You are saying sorry, yes. You are saying that you can produce invariants of what three manifolds? Again, to... uh, th th three manifolds Arc? decorated by these sort of spin C connections. Um, it'll be a higher rank than one. Uh, it's mm -hmm. going to be like n minus one in this case. Um, and, and this spin C connection, it somehow appears. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, uh, in in Rishitikhin Turayev story, uh, as far as I remember, you you have to uh, present your three manifold as a surgery uh, along the link. If you consider a construct state sums, it's not Rishitikhin Turayev. I think it's Turayev Vero when you consider simplicial decomposition of your three manifold and build the state sum out of elementary simplices. Uh, and, uh, but in, in both constructions, you, people used quantum groups at, at roots of one, uh, and otherwise you, you will not have a modular structure on your braided monoidal category. But here you would, you consider UQSLN of this, uh, the continue cuts type, and uh, you consider what finite all finite dimensional representations or, or what? Because... Yeah, they uh, this CGP con uh, construction um, doesn't consider all of them. I believe they constrain themselves to semi simple actions of the Carton, uh, so it's not. They work with weight modules. They don't work with um, mm. modules where you have uh, generalized eigenvectors for the Carton generators. Okay, I'm confused the following. If I remember uh, correctly, this mm, mm, cuts the continue. It's sort of it's a very. Uh, you have uh, your UQSLN has a large center and you should do something with it. So your representations will be sort of a bundle of, it will be Azumaya algebra of the spectrum of the center and the spectrum of yeah. the center. 
Yeah, which means that I'm not even sure what do you mean saying that there's something is semi-simple. Mm -hmm. So it's somehow... So uh, are, you, are you asking about the H generators or... No, no uh, as so for we, H, uh, the, it's not enough. If your algorithm yeah, has so a large center, you, you, you do have... Say you do have this large center exactly as as you're saying and this is tied into the the flat connections or spin c structures that we've been talking about um just like we saw with the rank one case yeah. um this this exponential generator in some sense captures the holonomy or this zeta that mm -hmm. we were talking about oh, okay. uh, in the same way if you look at the central generators um in this higher rank setting they will also describe uh flat connections for uh the, the corresponding flavors free group um in this case it'll be a rank n minus one um flavor symmetry and that corresponds to setting all of the sort of off diagonal generators or the central elements made from them to zero but having the the group like generators um, acting semi simply with uh, with their uh, actions describing this this connection, the whole yeah, of it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. But uh, uh, is it a sort of a state sum? It's Rishitihi. It's Turayev uh, Vero construction. Uh, or... I believe it's closer to a Rashitik and Turayev type uh, construction. You should have, uh, uh, okay, then you should have something which is. Your three manifold should be indeed expressed as a surgery over a link. Yeah. And, uh, then, so, well, uh, I believe that these, these people, they, they proved invariance with respect to Kirby moves and other stuff, but uh, probably I am not familiar with that story. Did they? Because yeah, it, yeah, they are able to three, produce a full. Uh, uh, yeah, so this CGP construction is able to produce a full, not I mean not fully extended TQFT, but uh, certainly for any mm -hmm. free manifold decorated by uh, these these flat connections oh, okay, or okay. spin C structures. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Uh, so the the aim of the rest of the talk will be to tell you what the 3D topological quantum field theory is in some physical sense um, and provide for you uh, some utility for, for that description. And I'll remind you of how uh, that utility manifests itself in the more familiar setting of just vanilla Chern-Simons theory. Um, okay, so a quantum field theory for this um, higher rank case for arbitrary levels, uh, the main things that we want to try to match come from inputs uh, due to the quantum group itself. First, it should be Chern Simons like. Um, it should have some SUN Chern Simons gauge fields that will have line operators, these Wilson line operators that have the same familiar truncation to some finite number of simples. Um, moreover, it should have the types of flavor symmetries we were talking about earlier due to this large center. Um, in this example, it should be a, a PSUN or PSLN type flavor symmetry. Um, and our category of line operators should um, live over PSUN, where generically it should be semi-simple and over one, the identity element, it should be highly non-semi-simple. Um, another bonus that we would like is to have some uh, holomorphic boundary condition that supports the fagin punin algebra um, that was in this triangle we were talking about earlier. And so the proposal we have with Thomas Kreutzig, Tudor Mafta, and Nathan Gear is to start with a particular 3D n equals four quantum field theory called T of SUN. This shows up all over the place, especially in connections to uh, super gang mills and four dimensions. 
Uh, but it's just some quantum field theory. If you don't like um, the physical description of it, then you can sort of forget about this bottom part of the slide. Suffice it to say, there is a specific quantum field theory that we can point to and say, we think it's this one. Um, and I've written some things in green here about relating to some ultraviolet uh, gauge linear sigma model, but you can you don't need to worry about that too much. Suffice it to say, there is some quantum field theory, T of S U N, we couple it to churn simons gauge fields, and then we do a topological twist. So this is the sort of quantum field theory I was talking about at the beginning of the lecture series, these sort of exotic churn simons theories where you have this, uh, this extended supersymmetry. Uh, so this is just what the uh, physicist uh, might call the theory, but if you don't like... Yeah, yes. I, I don't like because uh, when we talk about theory, it's in the end will be some kind of a category. So that's my question is, you said that you start with uh, uh, ordinary Chern Simons, yeah? And so let's uh, kind of think that Rishitikhin Turayev is equivalent to, to Chern Simons. So you start not with the quantum group of uh, De Concini and Katz, but with quantum group of Lustig, which is some quotient, all right? And what should I do with it in order to obtain um, uh, the category uh, corresponding uh, to this TNK? Well, you should use this this quantum group we had on the previous slide and mm. use the CGP construction rather than the Reshetik and Tarayev construction. But uh, uh, you, you said that uh, on, on, on the physics level, you start with ordinary chair and Simons, and then you do something with it. So then I would like to start with a modular tensor category of Reshetik and Tarayev and do something with it and obtain the category uh, which you probably called CGP or, or whatever. Is it possible to do this construction or it's... I don't think it would go in the direction you are suggesting. Um, if there is such a construction, which I'm not sure that there is, it would likely go in the other direction where this much, uh, this much more difficult quantum field theory has turned Simon's theory as some limit thereof. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think I have... Uh, necessarily a sharp construction for you um, purely from a quantum group perspective or something of that flavor. Um, it certainly isn't something as simple as take the Rashatik and Tarayev construction and mess with it a little bit and then you'll get something else. It's 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 a much more subtle thing, I think. Oh, that would be interesting. Um, if, if there is... On vertex algebras like conformal extension, some other stuff. You you can do some mathematical construction with categories. So that's yeah. what I asked. It's not, it, it doesn't have to be an easy construction, like put Q equal something more yeah. complicated, but that's, I, I was interested, what, what is it? Well, but if uh, you, you don't know, let's move on, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we have this proposal for quantum field theory. There's lots of quantum fe field theoretic checks you can make. Um, I won't bore you with those. Uh, the only one I will mention is sort of this, this point right here where we wanted to identify a certain boundary condition that we believe uh, supports the pagan tipunin algebra. Uh, in the same way that Trent Simon's theory saw the WZW vertex algebra. And this comes from looking at super Yang Mills. Um, there's lots of physics in here, but suffice it to say that this super Yang Mills construction suggests that um, the boundary vertex algebra arising in this TNK theory, which arises by taking a certain limit of this of this picture that we have on the right. Um, the, there's a certain boundary condition that does indeed land on the Fig and Tipunin algebra. You can use these brain constructions in the geometric Langlands twist of super Yang Mills using these corner 
vertex operator algebras developed by Gyoto and Rapchik. Um, uh, where do and you, you indeed find out? that. Where where this Gyoto? Sorry, could you say that again? Yeah, I, I ask where this Gyoto and Rapchak and why it appears here, because I know something about that. Uh, uh, yeah, um, so all of these boundary conditions I've labeled here show up as um, show up from brains in in type. Uh, uh, I guess it's two B, and so you realize uh, Yang Mills n equals four four dimensional Yang Mills as a world volume theory of some D three brains, and then these boundary conditions I've drawn here go as or arise as um ns5 or d5 brains that intersect those uh d3s in a certain fashion and so uh this is a one comma k brain uh intersecting a ns5 brain um and when you look at the world volume theory of the d3s um then you have super yang mills with these boundary conditions uh, given by those brains. And so in this context, we have one Neumann plus Chern Simons type boundary condition. Uh, we also have a Neumann plus this T of S U N. And when we do this, psi goes to uh, zero limit, we find that this wedge collapses and we find a three dimensional quantum field theory that couples T of S U N to this K uh, level K churn Simons theory. Um, so that that's where this, this construction lives. You can either think of it as a construction and brains on type two B or as boundary conditions in, uh, four D N equals four super Yang mills, or at least a, a topological twist of it. Yeah. You know, I, um, I, I can, I can think, uh, about, this uh, vertex algebra at the corner in terms of mm, just a collection of d uh, four brains. I mean, in terms of, if you, I, I don't know, you, you can say topological string. I mean, some, something which certainly mm, does not require me to consider a full string theory. Uh, mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is definitely a twisted version of of the full string theory. This geometric Langlands twist doesn't see everything. It's it's some topological twist of of uh, the full thing. You 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 see, there is a very mathematical uh, uh, description of this vertex algebra uh, at the corner, uh, which does not yeah. need, uh, require knowledge of any physics. And yeah. uh, what, what, what it does uh, require its uh, knowledge of a divisor in the Calabiao threefold, and this is it. Uh, so then uh, I am trying to, to, to understand where uh, is it, how to see whatever quantum group uh, or representations of quantum group from that pure mathematical description, which uses. Mm, uh, in in the case of uh, Gayota Rapchak, I think you should take very simple Calabiao like C cube, three dimensional vector yeah. space, and three coordinate planes. This is it. Yeah, uh, three copies of C square, and maybe with some multiplicities. Yeah, because you have some. Yeah. Part. All right, mm, but I. Uh, I, are, are there any statements like that certain category of modules over Gayota Rapchak VOA are, is equivalent to the category of some representations of some quantum group? Uh, uh, yeah, so this corner VOA here, the DNK that I'm drawing, um, at least way back in the beginning, I was mentioning that there is certainly a conjectural equivalence that is proven for the rank one case. Um, so that that's one way you can connect quantum groups to this Kyoto Rapchak construction. 
and where um, where it is in this in triangle where where this goyota so it, it's in the voa side of the triangle uh, so these fagan two uh, algebras live at this corner yeah. in the in the psi goes to zero limit of those pictures i was drawing yeah. I, I know fagan i know Gayota and I know Rabchak, but these are three different people. So Fagin Tipunin yeah. VOA is the same as Gayota Rabchak VOA. For for this specific choice of corner, there's many choices that you can consider in the Gayota Rabchak construction, and this is one of them. And with this specific choice, looking at the corner of this brain, this B1K brain, and this uh, B D one zero brain, um, then you should get the Fagan T Poonin algebra arising as a psi goes to zero limit of this picture. So <laughs> it's a certain Gaiota Rapshack construction. It's not an arbitrary one, it's a very particular one. Uh, there is a Gaiota Rapchak construction as a certain uh, uh, Drinfield Sokolov reduction. Uh, so uh this type of thing because you know when you yeah. say about uh, whatever ns5 brain it it my my brain is sleeping because i i, I do not have intention yeah. so but yeah I so the... mathematical constructions related to voa so then this is why I'm yeah asking. so so the gauto rapchak construction is a way of taking these simple building blocks in some sense and gluing them together in this uh, corner story. So you can realize very complicated situations, for example, like this one on the left, as more simple objects. So the DS reduction you're referring to actually sits at this corner here. This is a W algebra, which arises as a DS reduction. Yeah. Here you have a current algebra at a certain level. Mm -hmm. And this brain that connects the two of them is uh, instructing you to take those two vertex algebras, this W algebra and this current algebra, and extend by certain modules. So and this is what I've illustrated here. Ah, so it's indeed conformal extension in the sense of Fagin, I, I think. Yeah, and and the whole point of, of this discussion here is that when you take the psi goes to zero limit of, of this extension, you mm -hmm. pick up the Fig and T Kunin algebra with its known decomposition as a W algebra times current algebra module. The current algebra sort of decouples and becomes this large center in this uh, psi goes to zero limit. Mm -hmm. And the extra part is this DNK, which is precisely the Fig and T Kunin algebra. This decomposition in terms of a uh, an SL2 representation and a W algebra representation is the decomposition um, of the Fagan T. Poonin algebra. It's W algebra as a W algebra module for, for uh, SLN, but for SLN, okay. Yeah, for SLN, this is all SLN here. So, and, and, and R, R lambda, it's a representation of what again? It's of, of SL2, or sorry, of SLN. Uh, uh, of SLN. And this is yeah. kind of Fagan Tipunian decomposition as a module or something. Okay. Yeah, as a W algebra module times uh, an SLN module. Yeah, I do not see immediately how, how to interpret it geometrically. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So, so this, this slide was just to motivate that, hey, we do have some reasonable, mathematically precise-ish description of uh, the boundary condition I was after. We do see that this NK theory we propose um, does indeed have the fagan tikunin algebra sitting on its, uh, as a boundary vertex algebra. Uh, um, so I wanted to mention a couple of so what's this has been a lot of physics. And so what I wanted to mention is just a couple of things that this does buy you mathematically. Um, in blue, I've written some of the analogs from ordinary turn simons theory, or at least how, how you should think of these statements in terms of ordinary turn simons theory. The first one is that some questions are 
more easily answered using tools in physics. Whether or not they're mathematically precise, they at least give you things to aim for. Um, partition functions on, on manifolds or three manifolds uh, can be computed using path integral techniques. And these are related to graded Euler characters of state spaces um, and the Russia Tekin Turayev construction or conformal blocks um, for the vertex operator algebra. So uh, another when you say graded, so it's for me it doesn't look innocent because when you are um, when your manifold yeah is compact, I don't think you need grading. This you need grading when you do something equivalent. Yeah, I. Yeah, so I was forecasting what, what's needed ah, okay. in the more general right. setting where there uh -huh. is an interesting homological grading and the partition functions you would calculate physically uh, incorporate that as like a, the usual fermion, fermionic cancellations. And so certainly in the vanilla turn simon story, graded and Euler are not necessary. But of course, that's that's not something you can avoid in the more interesting setting that I was. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And certainly, if you look for Razansky Witten for a non compact target, uh, yeah, you need grading. Well, at least I do not see how to avoid it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I totally mm -hmm. agree. So, so you can, for this blue part, perhaps I shouldn't have said it, but I wanted to forecast that it is some. It is a feature that you would need uh, to compare to um, in this in more general setting. Mm -hmm. All right. So a, sec a second thing that uh, this buys you is it can relate questions in algebra to questions in geometry, um, conformal blocks, and state spaces in the Rush and Turayev construction are sort of in the realm of algebra, but the physical construction also offers you a way of describing these same state spaces as um, certain sheaf cohomology over over Bungie uh, associated to your surface. Is it not and a mathematical theorem? No, it is, but I don't think it sort of came out of the blue. I think that physics informed the existence of these these types oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 isomorphisms. Yeah. But, and so but it's I'm, a it, I'm trying it, it, to illustrate it, it, the utility of the quantum field theoretic perspective and this point is suggesting that you can often relate the questions in algebra to other questions in geometry by way of understanding the physics. So it's not sure, surely the, each thing here should be some mathematical statement, some mathematically precise theorem where conformal blocks or Russia Tekin state spaces are related to a uh, certain sheaf cohomology on Bungie, but those don't come out of a vacuum. You don't you don't just run into those in your in 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 your studies without having some uh, some inspiration from elsewhere, uh, or at least I, I don't I, know how you could get at it without. No, no, no. I mean, it's sort of. No, no. It's uh, it's. Uh, I believe it's pretty classical stuff, but uh, when yeah. you when you say ban SLN, uh, do you mean a stack, or do you mean some stable locus or what? I was I was being pretty agnostic, but you should probably use the stack if you really want to be doing things properly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was just meant as motivation. I wasn't trying to make any sort of controversial statements here. This was all just. Reminder of some of the things that a physical perspective buys you. And whether you like the physical perspective or not, at least it provides something that you can try to prove. Uh, but uh, if you know, it's kind of motivation for some more general statement, uh, I don't yeah. know in what generality, what should be on the left. It's conformal blocks for your what logarithmic VOA. Yeah, for the fake anti Poonin algebra. And on the right hand side. Uh, I haven't told you what that is, but I was oh. going to tell you at the at the very end. 
Again, oh, okay. that the, the right-hand side is something predicted by physics. Physics is almost more closely tied to the geometry than to the algebra. And maybe that's a one perspective on it, but I haven't told you about the generalizations of the right-hand side necessarily. Um, I'll, I'll mention it at the very end, but it will look like chief cohomology over bungee where I replace this, uh, this line bundle L by uh, something else um, that's going to be tied to my, my uh, quantum field theoretic realization of this theory, TNK. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, the, the third thing I wanted to mention is that if you'd like to stay in the world of algebras, then this quantum field theory at a perspective can offer you something as well. Namely, it can offer you sort of Merida equivalent uh, statements that you can try to prove. And in the context of ordinary Chern Simons theory, these are known as uh, level rank dualities, which can be phrased entirely in the language of uh, vertex operator algebras. Um, you don't need to say anything about quantum field theory or anything, but you certainly uh, helps you if you know that such a duality might exist from some physical perspective. And so the last part of today I wanted to mention to you was uh, along the lines of this last point where um, I wanted to describe to you a uh, version of level rank duality for this fagan t Poonin algebra. Um, so to get there, I wanted to remind you a bit about the ordinary level rank duality story. The way, one way to phrase that construction is as follows. You start with some large number of complex fermion VOAs. Here I have n times k, where n is the rank minus one, sorry, plus one, and k will be the level. And I have inside of here a certain affine VOA at level k, SLN at level k. Um, and the commutant of this um, affine VOA inside of the free fermions is another affine VOA, but now for GLK at level N. And the embedding of DNK and N tilde NK, which is the commutant of DNK inside of the free fermions, induces the braid reversed equivalence of categories where the decomposition of the free fermion VOA into modules for these commuting subalgebras allows you to deduce the, the form of this braid reversed equivalence of categories. And physically, this, this goes under the name of a level rank duality, where on one side you have um, GLN, on the other side you have SLN, and the levels and the ranks are, are tied to one another. I've done a, an annoying shift of the the ranks and levels just to match what physicists usually write down. But suffice it to say that this um, embedding of two commuting subalgebras into something with a trivial uh, category of modules is the flavor of the logarithmic or of the level rank dualities that I wanted to, to describe. So the commutant. Uh, so stating... for this, sorry, okay. could you say it again? The commutant of the DNK is taken inside of FFNK. No? Yeah, so we have this collection of fermions. Uh, mm -hmm. This is what I'm calling FFNK. Okay. And inside of it, you have this, this current subalgebra uh, generated by these currents that I've written up here. And you can ask for what uh, has regular OPEs with this current subalgebra, which is the commutant. And you find mm -hmm. that the commutant is this other affine algebra, but now based off of a different Lie group with a different rank, uh, where the rank is level is related to the level of your uh, original current algebra. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. We did, we did a quite something quite different of a level there, the in, involving pyrophormion or some generalization of a pyrophormion. Yeah, that, yeah. These, okay. these are the chiral fermions. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, the names of these VOAs are related 
to uh, the, the corresponding boundary condition. Um, this uh, WZW BOA um, arises as a Dirichlet boundary condition. And this commutant arises on a Neumann type boundary condition. And so this uh, level rank duality is some statement about how two different boundary conditions are describing the same bulk topological quantum field theory um, as we saw, or as was mentioned yesterday, um, because they both describe the same thing, they're necessarily equivalent to one another. And it's not exactly equivalent, it's a equivalent of traversal of the braiding. Mm -hmm. So um, what I wanted to describe next is um, a logarithmic version of this story where we replace the affine algebra with the Fig and Tipunin algebra. And I'm going to focus on the rank two, or sorry, the rank one case just for simplicity. Um, so this is working with the triplet algebras. If you looked at uh, k equals two, then you would get the triplet algebra we started with at the very beginning of today. Um, but I wanted to mention the the rank one case just for simplicity. So the level rank duality or logarithmic version thereof. Uh, goes as follows. You first realize this triplet algebra is a subalgebra inside of many or inside of a lattice algebra where it's a rescaled version of the root lattice for SLN. That's the thing that sort of generalizes to other big and Tikunin algebras. You can realize it as some screening subalgebra. And then this lattice subalgebra sits inside of 2k free fermions. What you can then try to do is compute the commutant. Um, of a version of this story. The Neumann-like boundary conditions that we've been um, able to describe from a quantum field theoretic perspective takes the form illustrated here. Um, so we have many free fermions. I'll mention those in a second. Uh, together with this uh, Langlands kernel VOA, this Langlands kernel VOA is known to be at the boundary of the T of SL2 vertex out or quantum field theory, as mentioning before. This is um, one of the many corners in the Gaiota Rapchep construction. It can also be realized uh, from a purely three dimensional perspective, as described by Costello and Gaiota. Um, but it's a, it's a concrete vertex operator algebra. Um, there's this Lee super algebra D12 uh, with parameter zero. And this is the level one affine algebra associated to that superly algebra. So this thing comes from the T of SUN, T of SU2 in this case. Uh, we add to it many free fermions. This is analogous to adding those free fermions on the boundary of uh, Chern-Simons theory. We couple them to one another, and then the Neumann boundary condition instructs us to take a coset with respect to an SL2 current subalgebra. So this Neumann-like boundary condition that comes from quantum field theory, not these brains constructions, which is sort of uh, an indirect construction. We can check within the 3D quantum field theory that I was mentioning before, uh, the algebra of local operators on this Neumann-like boundary condition, and we land on this, this certain coset. And then we're led to the following conjecture, namely, if we have 2k free fermions, uh, the triplet algebra and a slight modification of this coset I mentioned, this slight modification corresponds to an iterated coset, or sorry, an iterated simple current extension and orbifold that I don't want to, to mention. Um, but there's a minor modification of that um, algebra I was mentioning on the previous page that fits inside of many free fermions and they're expected to be a mutual coset, uh, sorry, mutual commutants with this triplet algebra. A consequence of this first point is then this second point that there's going to be a braid reversed equivalence between these two vertex operator algebras. And moreover, the structure of the free fermions that contains this uh, triplet algebra um, 
is is rigidly constrained. Namely, we can write it as a sum over simple objects for the triplet algebra in a prescribed way, where tau is the equivalence that reverses the braiding between uh, the triplet and the Neumann-like boundary condition. In the same way, we can write the free fermions as a module for the Neumann-like boundary condition. And uh, so th this is a concrete uh, conjecture you can try to prove uh, in the same way that you could prove a like the logarithm or the ordinary level rank duality. So this is a, a consequence that we come upon from our quantum field theoretic perspective that is precise mathematics. Um, I haven't explained to you what this the slight modification is, but it's uh, described explicitly in our paper. It's just, as I mentioned, uh, an orbifold and um, simple current extension of the thing I wrote down before. OK, so um, I guess now is probably a good time to wrap up. Uh, the last few things I wanted to mention was a couple of the things I wasn't able to talk about during the talk, but uh, shows up in our paper. Namely, the first point I want to mention was a geometric description of these uh, categories and state spaces that comes from the quantum field theoretic perspective. Um, this first line is what the quantum field theory predicts the category of modules should be describable as. Um, this vector space V is the one that I wrote ages ago, way at the beginning. It's uh, it's the sort of base of this large representation here. Um, I won't bore you with those details. The sorry, this this gamma is this product of GL factors I had at the beginning, but it's a it's a concrete representation. It's a concrete uh, group that acts on it. We look at the loop space of this quotient, and we propose that the category of modules for these algebras has a geometric description as uh, loop equivariant D modules on this on this loop space quotient. And in the same way, we get a geometric description of the state spaces on a Riemann surface sigma, again, realized as peak cohomology over Bun SLN um, with values in uh, a variant of that of that uh, line bundle we were talking about before, where we, in addition to having that line bundle contribution, have a contribution from T S U N. Um, I can explain a bit more about what this extra contribution is, but it's not explicitly known at the moment. It's a very hard thing to do, but the physics says that this uh, this contribution is what you need to add to the line bundle L K. Uh, in order to reproduce the state is it spaces. a bundle or it's a coherent sheaf or what is it this e it should be a coherent sheaf um i don't think it'll be a line bundle or a bundle uh it's probably a, a coherent sheaf or it's mm -hmm. definitely a coherent sheaf not a bundle uh, so it's a conjecture and in what terms this e I mean, uh, 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 in what physics terms you can describe a coherent sheaf or maybe a complex of coherent sheaves, I don't know, on BAN SLN. Uh, yeah, so uh, from the very, very beginning lecture, I was mentioning certain types of deformations that your quantum field theories have when they, are, uh, when they have flavor symmetries. One of the type of flavor symmetries I mentioned was uh, B type, which leads to this deformation by flat connections. That doesn't show up on any part of this slide. The other type uh, is what I called A type, and it is what will what what shows up on this on this slide here. Namely, when you have an A type deformation, what you find is that you can couple your theory to to holomorphic G bundles, and in particular, you can ask for the state space as it fibers over the moduli of G bundles, of holomorphic G bundles. So this is the 
coherent sheaf of state spaces that my key SUN theory has as it fibers over the moduli of holomorphic bundles for its Higgs branch flavor symmetry. So this concretely is the um, coherent sheaf over bun SLN that measures the state space my quantum field theory would assign to the surface sigma in the presence of that background um, holomorphic G bundle. And, and this you... is far from understood. The mm -hmm. structure that it has, uh, i.e. A, a coherent sheaf, um, is was predicted by Gaioto, um, but a concrete description of it is is lacking even in the rank one case. So th this is um, not necessarily something that can be proven at the moment, but with a better understanding of what these state spaces look like as a as it as you vary the background uh, holomorphic G bundle, uh, that that would give you access to what this uh, state space H sigma is. I'm a bit confused because in in the ordinary Chern Simons you have the description of this space of conformal blocks entirely in terms of your quantum group or other the category of representations. And if you, you mentioned that it's a theorem uh, due to some people abbreviated by three first letters, C, whatever, GP, mm, uh, yeah. that uh, you have, it, it looks like you should have this description of H of sigma in terms of representations of, of, of this uh, cuts the continue quantum group. Uh, so... Uh... So there is one important point about that uh, theorem, and namely it's that it only accesses H0 of this right-hand side. So the CGP topological quantum field theory does not access this entire state space, but only the zeroth cohomology. Uh, um, uh, it has yet to be extended to a full derived topological quantum field theory as, uh, as illustrated in this last point I was going to mention. The CGP construction is um, definitely based purely in pure mathematics. It's rigorous theorems, but it doesn't access everything that physicists would want. So when I was talking about the graded Euler characters and so on, they will not match the physical expectations because they cannot access the higher cohomologies. Mm -hmm. So even, um, even the CGP construction. Graded. Sorry, could you say that again? No, I mean that I, I thought that when you mention graded uh, Euler characteristic, then uh, kind of uh, it will capture age, uh, I mean, H0 will correspond to some, I don't know, zero part of this graded yeah. character. Uh, and so your uh, honest H of sigma should be graded. And so uh, then you say that uh, zero part of this left-hand side is H0, and it can be expressed in terms of the quantum group, but not the full a space of state is it what you're saying uh, i know i expect the entirety of this state space on the right hand side should be accessible from the quantum group the construction due to uh cgp does not access the entirety that we as physicists expect there to be uh, so they can only access h0 and so if you were to compute on the physical side some um partition function on a three manifold, it will not match the CGP in all cases because they can't access situations where there is higher cohomology. It's very strange. Uh, so uh, what is, yeah, it's really strange. Uh, uh, do you mean that their construction somehow should be um, uh, extended to be 
I don't know, derived in some sense. Or, yeah, or... exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, but other uh, mathematical, you, you know, like for the um, representation theory, I forgot how it's called, small quantum group, there is a variety of mathematical results which relate uh, that category to... Um, to perverse shifts on the affine Grassmannian. Yeah, you know, uh, there is a lot of uh, yeah. activity. In, uh, Braverman was one. Of, all right, so, but as for this, Katz uh, de Cancini quantum group, uh, other similar results, which... Uh, give... the, the one that I know... Um for certain is related to when sigma is a uh, genus one surface. So you're talking about a torus. And in that case, we can show that the, the physical expectations for the state space on a torus are reproduced as Hochschild cohomology of the category of modules for the quantum group. So in that context, it does seem yeah, to match, the, but the yeah. CGP construction does not access the higher cohomological parts of that construction. So insofar as I would want to compare to some proven mathematical statements about PQFT, no, there are none that I know of. Uh, if you mm -hmm. want to uh, allow yourself to describe the state space on a surface, on a, on a torus via the Hochschild cohomology of the category of line operators, then you can get some measure of success in comparing to physical expectations. Uh, but I remember for, for Rosansky Witten, there was uh, Rosansky and Witten uh, proposal how it should look like for an arbitrary, uh, um, for sigma of, of arbitrary genus. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, for indeed for g equal zero and g equal one, it's some uh, a general uh, kind of very general categorical uh, considerations, which I believe were explained by Caldararo. And indeed, for g equal one, you get the Hochschild cohomology that's general, but for higher. Uh, genus, yeah. I'm not sure that it's even um, explained for Rosansky Witten, but maybe I forgot. Mm, uh, all right. And uh, Rosansky Witten certainly proposed what those state spaces should look like, but um, again, those those necessarily be accessed by this CGP construction. They definitely ag agree with things that physicists can compute, such as state spaces or characters thereof. Uh, but an important point that I want to drive home is that this is not a rosensky witten theory uh, outside of that little baby example I was starting out with. And so you can't just take those results out of the box and hope to apply it to these to these theories um, beyond the uh, the general statement that you were mentioning about Hochschild cohomology. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, but again, that that still doesn't fit within the CGP construction. So if you want to compare to the state of the art in the uh, non-semi-simple TQFT from a purely mathematical perspective, then uh, you're essentially stuck to the torus in these state spaces. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, interesting. Yes, okay. Mm. Um, the other thing I guess I wanted to mention was that there are many more examples that have been worked out to some greater or lesser extent. Uh, the first one I wanted to mention is um, Trin Simon's theory is based off of the supergroup GL11. Uh, Nathan Gear and uh, Matt Young studied the CGP invariants arising from these, these quantum field theoretic examples. Um, Wenjin Niu and I studied the vertex algebraic aspects of the same systems. And there was really good um, agreement between the two. Um, Nathan Gear, Matt Young, and I are working on the general compact abelian supergroup case. Um, but 
in the more familiar three-dimensional n equals four quantum field theoretic perspective, um, there's been a lot of recent work due to Andrew Ballin and Wenjun Niu, um, as well as Ballin, Thomas Kreutzig, Peter de Moften Niu, uh, where they study abelian gauge linear sigma models. So these were another class of quantum field theories I was mentioning at the beginning of the lecture series, but one important feature is that they are they're not finite. Namely, they are non-semi-simple, non-finite categories. And they can extract braided tensor structures in these examples for both the A and B type twists, but neither of those will fit within the CGP construction, which requires that your quantum field theory be finite semi-simple, or sorry, finite non-semi-simple. So you need to have a finite number of simple objects for their construction, and that does not hold in this uh, abelian gauge linear sigma models example. But it, in, in your work on this GL11, so what's, yeah. uh, what's the difference of Chern-Simons with, uh, I don't know, GL11 and, for example, I don't know, GL to see like complexified i mean and what specifics what if if, if i try to kind of naively of course uh, uh, to to develop uh, uh theory simons for gl11 i don't know mm -hmm. uh, so then what uh, uh mm, like mathematically, like to describe it in terms, I don't know, conformal blocks or some quantum uh, group. So what 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 will go wrong? What will go wrong in comparing GL one one to GL two or? What no, I mean, I just I just take I just take any, any Lie algebra. I forget that it's a Lie super algebra, and I. I will work with certain category of representations of UQ GL11 uh, mm -hmm. and, and try to build, I don't know, it, at least braided monoidal, maybe uh, with some non trivial braiding, uh, mm -hmm. some sophisticated braiding, uh, but still. Uh, just to 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 start with the Lie algebra, uh, well, super algebra in this case, but try to do whatever mathematicians did like thirty years ago. So what what will go wrong? Um, I think, um, well, in, in this GL one one case, I can't say the same would be true for GL two, uh, but in GL one one, it's a it's not going to be a semi-simple category anymore. So you can't do what was done 30 years ago. You need to use this more sophisticated machinery of Constantino, Gear, and Patro Miron. Um, in which case, nothing goes wrong. You can you can do this GL11 without issue. And this was done by Gear and Young in the paper I mentioned. Um, in the paper of my own with, uh, with Wenja and Niu, we studied the vertex algebraic side of things. And again, there's no problem there. Um, it requires some more modern tools to, to get at its representation theory and the detail that we would want for, uh, for physics, but nothing, nothing goes wrong. And in those what, how has done Lustig equivalence look in this case? Um, Again, I don't think that has been uh, has been proven. It, it should it should be of the same flavor where you uh, you could have some equivalence of braided tensor categories between the vertex operator algebras that Wenjin and I describe in our paper and the quantum groups that Gear and Young use in their constructions. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that there is a uh, Proven kajdan lustig type correspondence in those in those cases. Mm. Okay, so that's probably because it's very recent. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the vertex algebras that Wenjin and I study aren't so exotic, but it's it's not a, a trivial thing to to describe them. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the last two points I wanted to mention are more questions rather than things that have been done. Um, the action of the modular group on state spaces uh, is something that is built into the CGP construction insofar as it only accesses H0. Um, but it would also be great to have a more geometric or physical description of these state spaces. And in the same in the same fashion, uh, we would want S and T matrices, for example, on uh, the torus state spaces. Um, for the two sphere, you have access to the algebras of local operators. Um, H zero in these examples is one dimensional, so it's not very exciting if you just restrict it there. But the higher cohomological groups could yield infinite dimensional algebras of local operators that um, are not even understood well from a physical perspective. And so that's a, an important direction that uh, can both be pushed on the mathematical side by generalizing the CGP constructions to higher cohomological things or a derived TQFT, um, and also from a physical perspective of actually describing these local operators in some uh, concrete way. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is something I've said several times, which is uh, it would be great to be able to extend these results to a fully fledged derived EQFT. Um, fully extended is a lot to ask, but at the very least state spaces and partition functions would be a really wonderful thing to be able to compare. And physically we can access the characters, graded characters, of these state spaces uh, without too much issue. The CGP construction, as I've said, does not access them. And so there's there's lots of room for improvement of sort of on both sides of the story. Um, and, so, and so with that, I, I'll say thank you. I really appreciate all of your questions and uh, your patience in letting a physicist try to explain mathematics. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, when you said uh, mm, a full uh, TQFT, you mean that you will have two categories? I mean, it's it's not, it should assign something to a point, yeah, so that's... Yeah, it's... so I would certainly love for uh, us to be able to go all the way down to two categories. Um, I don't think that the CGP construction has any access to that yet. They can do state spaces, partition functions, and line operators. They can't do the two category of boundary conditions. Um, there has been lots of work in, in particular by like Justin Hilburn and um, his collaborators on trying to describe the two categories uh, or at least some version of them in these examples I mentioned of Ballen, Kreuzig, Demott, and U. But again, those are also outside of the access of the CGP construction due to this non-finite nature of them. But uh, I, I, yeah, it, as you suggest, I would definitely like it to go all the way down. Um, but there's lots of work that still needs to be done to get even physically, uh, to get at those two categories physically. And another thing which you said that you, you wouldn't explain, and indeed you, you kept your word, it's uh, analytic continuation <laughs> of churn <Chern's side. laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't think I have any, any deep things to say. Uh, so I think I'll just keep my word <laughs> on not saying anything. No, I mean that... Uh, 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 I mean, I have kind of an interest uh, in relation to this Zihet invariance, which Sergei, which Gukov yeah. and other people consider. It's also kind of a logarithmic VOA appear, yeah. and so uh, and where is the place of that story? Mm, even uh, uh, yeah, so. Um, they definitely should be very related. This this Z hat invariance from Coulomb branches story should be very much related to this. Although um, they 
are able to get at roots of unity in sort of a, a circuitous fashion um, where they have some generic constructions and then they're able to specialize it. Um, I would expect them to agree, um, but I, um, to be honest, haven't haven't thought too much about the generic Q case. Yeah, but basically um, you expect that whatever they do, the way they do, when you just specialize to to roots of unity, it will be uh, your, for example, H of sigma, uh, whatever, some or, or the category, this uh, C1, uh, which is on 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 the slide, uh, uh, it should be a specialization of some general uh, mm, uh, a generic Q uh, mm, construction of Gukov and other. Yeah, I would, I would definitely like it to be. Um, I don't know if I have any concrete uh, statements that show that they are the same necessarily uh, lots of weird things can happen of roots at roots of unity and so i would definitely want them to match uh when you specialize their results um, but it's also not inconceivable that one could miss things by looking at generic q and then specializing rather than doing a more uh like honest root of unity computation in particular, I, so it, it, I definitely would expect them to match, but it doesn't seem impossible that subtleties arise at roots of unity. I, I, I remember uh, 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 Gukov wrote paper with a group of other people, including Nakajima, yeah. where they speculated that uh, the invariants they construct uh, sort of Razansky Witten invariance, but uh, for very strange target, which is not even finite dimensional. It's something like the cotangent bundle uh, to the fine Grassmannian. Uh, yeah. You, you discussed uh, this T star of C, which is non compact, but still finite dimensional. And if you do it equivariantly, uh, you are perfectly fine uh, but I don't know whether even any, any sign of infinite dimensional hypercalor uh, yeah so it, the uh, so they have an infinite dimensional target um, and from what I understand uh, that you can use loop rotations on the affine Grassmannian um, to make it finite dimensional-ish. Uh, namely, you can consider uh, these loop rotations of the, the disk of, of the affine Grassmannian. And if you work with uh, the ZK subgroup of, of C star uh, loop rotations, then the fixed component should be something like the the Coulomb branches, or sorry, the Higgs branches that are used here, or some some flavor of that. Uh, the way I understand it is the roots of unity come about um, when you look at this certain ZK fixed component of the affine Grassmannian, which is finite dimensional. And so you can uh, try to make the comparisons that way. I also I, I remember from one of his talks that uh, some sort of a th 3D mirror symmetry plays a role. Uh, in, yeah, so that, for uh, us, what, we... what about you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the 3D mirror symmetry arises because we, we use the topological A twist. Um, so our proposal here. Uh, use red A twist, which is not the rosansky witten twist. So when they're doing their construction, they're doing rosansky witten theory, which is the B twist of a of one of these nonlinear sigma models. And so mirror symmetry exchanges the A and B twist, just like in two dimensions. And so this 
uh, construction that we have should be the mirror of theirs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, provided um, they, they specialize their construction. At yeah. Least. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So very, very interesting. Uh, yeah, your paper is like 200 pages. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So. It's not easy to, to explain it in three lectures. Okay, uh, more questions. Yeah. Are, are there more, more questions to, to the speaker? So, last chance. Well, if there are no more questions, so Nicola, thank you very much. Really very interesting and <laughs> mysterious, <laughs> yeah, I would say, for mathematician, for me as a mathematician, yeah, it's a lot of things to 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 think about, and probably indeed now I I, I will be able to look kind of deeply dive into your paper. Okay, thank you very much.